listen up. Y'all, it's the queen of automation, Megan Donnelly, here to give you inspiration. Founders and business owners, gather round. I'ma show you how to build systems that I'll astound. Streamline your processes, no need. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Queen of Automation podcast, where we talk about why technology is only good when it works and how I help you make it work. I'm your host, Megan Donnelly. Today, we are getting geeky and techie with Lisa Williams. Say hi, Lisa. The owner and founder of the Tope Agency, an agency leading the charge in helping medicinal and recreational cannabis grow revenue and keep their current customers happy. Did I say that right? You did. All right. Well, I'm so glad that you're here. So Lisa is uh, another one of my networking buddies, friends, cohorts, if you will, that is in the brand built community. And we are loving it and having a good time. So I'm super excited to be talking with you because this is actually something that is very near and dear to my heart. The uh, industry you're working in, I have two kids on the spectrum, one with really high anxiety and we, um, I think about this a little bit differently than I think a lot of people do because I really don't want to go the route of narcotics, you know, for such young kids. And but we'll, we'll jump into that in a minute. First, I want to hear where you're tuning in from and uh, talk a little bit about yourself and what got you into this industry. Because I know you have just a kind of regular agency background. What made you transform and pivot into the <laughs> Yeah. So I'm calling in from Texas. So I'm going to say y'all probably way too many times. Yes. <laughs> My mom was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So there's a lot of y'all going here too. <laughs> Yay. Um, and it's already getting hot here, you know, like, so yeah, we, we got to bear with the heat. But uh, okay, so let me back up. I did run a digital marketing agency that was outside of the cannabis world for the last five years. And somewhere in that mix, we had an opportunity through a partnership to start working with a cannabis dispensary, running their social media and what we call communications, which is their text and email communications through different platforms that serve mainly for the cannabis industry. And last year, my team and I just kind of had some brainstorming sessions because I felt like, and I'm getting ready to write an article about this, Megan. We had moving sidewalks going every direction. And I was brainstorming, oh, let's do this and let's come up with this. And we weren't just keeping on that one sidewalk and staying focused. And we decided to go all in on cannabis and build out a new brand called the Toke Agency. But in our heads, we kept thinking, we're going to build the Toke Agency and we're going to run our other marketing agency. And in January, we were like, uh-uh, it's too much. No way. We need one moving sidewalk and it needs to propel us in a forward motion. So literally since January and it's June right now, we have just, you know, been all in on cannabis marketing. I've immersed myself in the cannabis industry. So even back when we were working two years ago with cannabis brands, we, I just kept saying they're my outliers. They're my outliers. Like it wasn't even one of the industries that we were going after or looking to even grow in. Yeah. And, you know, when we started diving into our revenue and our numbers and projections and everything, we're like, this really makes sense. And it's a booming industry where women owned and operated. Um, we love what we do and we want to bring it to the community and grow with dispensaries. Yeah. I think that's great. I think it's such a under, I don't even know what the right word is, but it's, there's not enough people talking about it in the right way. I mean, there's such, you know, there's the controversy around the cannabis industry. So it's, uh, first of all, let me back up because if you haven't seen her agency, she's going to tell you how to find her here in a little bit, but you got to go check her agency out. It, <laughs> The coolest branding. It is so fun. It's like a pun on words, every single page. And it makes you laugh and it is light and airy. And it makes it makes you really feel comfortable about talking about the topic because there's so many people that are still uncomfortable about it. And I think that your agency is doing such a great job of making it not uncomfortable and making it 
for the people, for everyone. Like this can yeah. be, should be for everyone when it's done the right way, when it's done, you know, and it's just, it's just, it's just been really cool to read and check out your content. So one of the things that I always talk about with all my guests, and I know you've heard me talk about this. Everyone has heard me talk about this. I talk about it all over the place, but I would love to hear your take on work-life balance, right? Because I don't believe in work-life balance. It's all life. When you're working, it's life. When you're not working, it's life. And so I would love to hear what you, like, what do you feel about that topic? And if there's anything significant and you just said it because January, you just switched everything over that's happened in the last six months to a year. Like what, you know, what significant other than that, I guess, outside of what you just mentioned has happened in the last six months to a year. That's really made you see like work-life balance differently or differently than I see it or the same. (laughs) Well, okay. So I love that you say, you don't believe in work-life balance. Uh, I, you and I were not in corporate America, right? And so I, I was, I was for a long was. time. I yeah. was for a long time too. And there was no work-life balance. It was work. And then you had a commute home for me, which was an hour, a commute there and a commute home. And then I had my weekends and that was literally all I had. And then my two week vacation or yeah. whatever time off I had. And that you took your laptop on with you because exactly. you were afraid to come back to the cluster fuck, excuse my language, on yes. your desk. Yes. yes. So being an entrepreneur, I don't believe that there is work life balance. I am my business and I am part of my life and it all just, you know, blends and meshes together. There are days that I work 12 hours. There are days I don't work at all. There are weekends that I'm like, I have piled all this shit up so that I could knock it all out on Sunday because I don't get phone calls and text messages on Sundays and I'm just shutting everything down the noise and I'm going to work. And then there's times where I'm like, Hey, I don't, I want to go shopping. I want to go hang out with my friends. I want to go have lunch with my son, you know, all these other things that happen as well. And so there is no balance. It's just I go to bed at night constantly thinking of ways to improve my business. I have notebooks all over the place with, you know, messages to myself and voice notes. And so, and then I'll write personal stuff to myself to to remind me I'm enough and, you know, I, I, I matter and I'm beautiful and so is everybody else. And, you know, I, and I'm rich with knowledge and, education and it doesn't have to come from a formal place. And so, and the other, the other part of me is like, why are we so divided in this world? And this kind of goes into this work-life balance because I think we, we think it's either one way or another and it's not, it's, it's, there's no way and there's no right way. And your right way is right for you. My right way is right for me. And it's okay. It's okay. And the reason your right way is right for you is because of your beliefs, your who's impacted you, who's influenced you, your parents, your teachers, your siblings, your spouse, your friends. And that that formed your beliefs. And mine is different. And there's, it's okay if you don't agree with me or I don't agree with you. It's okay that your way works for you and it might not work for me. And I think we get in this mindset that we have to argue with people because we don't believe the way they believe. Yes. I think it's, it's so, it's so great to hear you say that because it's, it's one of the things that people forget like it's we've been told this is the way to do it this is how you grow a business this is how you grow a brand this is how you know there's all the tricks and the hacks and the blueprints and the coaches and the whatever and it's like there are no two businesses there are no two people there are no two brands that are alike it's nearly impossible can you do the same tasks 
sure, but not really, because at the heart of it, it's based on your brand and your business and you have to do you. Like, I don't even believe in weekends anymore. Would you say, let, I, I'm going to throw this out there and see what you think, because I, the one of the things that I love about forging my own path, creating my own brand, owning my own company, being my own boss, is that I work when I want. Mm -hmm. My weekend doesn't have to be Saturday and Sunday. It could be Monday and Tuesday. It could be Wednesday and Friday. Like it doesn't have to be. And I think the word weekend when you're an entrepreneur is ridiculous because maybe like you said, if you want to work on a Sunday, work on a Sunday. If you want to work on a Friday, work on a Friday. Like if you don't, you don't, you know? And it's one of those things like this week, I've been completely all over the place because I had two graduations. I had a son graduating from eighth grade and then my senior he graduates on Sunday so and my mom is here so there's I have a house full of people and and you know like I'm going back and forth with Jane and the rest of my team and they're like well what do you you know how do you want to work this I'm like I don't know you know and it's we have the luxury to do that because we've put in the time and the effort to to make it work and I personally believe and we'll jump right in because I personally believe that my technology and the automations that I, and my operations and how we build our operations for our business is key to being able to do that. And I know a lot of people think, well, it's not about the technology. It's not. Your brand is not going to be made or broken by yours. Well, that's not true. <laughs> it could be broken by your technology if you mess up your operating experience that badly. But it's, yes, fundamentally at the end of the day, it's the words, right? Your words are the most important part and how you position yourself. But your operations, if you're still doing it, like if you were doing everything that you're doing right now, and I can I can say this because I know you have a CRM and a few other really awesome tools that I'm going to let you talk about. Um, if you were doing everything that you're doing right now manually, you would be, yeah, exactly. Look at the look at you would be drowning. You wouldn't have a business because you'd be spending so much time managing the business instead of, you know, running the business, which is people don't understand the difference between that. So I'm just going to explain that quick. Managing the business means all of your low level admin tasks and all of the things that you repeat on a daily basis, all of the repetitive tasks that you do over and over and over again. Automate those, please, people just automate them. Stop working on them. Stop doing the same thing over and over and over again. And it's amazing how once that's done and taken off your plate, you have freed up so much time to do all these other things that actually matter to grow your business and make you more money. So I would love for you to jump in as a, another agency owner and talk about what you're doing from an operations side that works. Maybe what, if you don't mind sharing with us, maybe like some of the things that you've tried either in the past that haven't worked, so you quickly pivoted, or even if there's things that you're doing right now that you think could be improved upon, and let's talk about it and see, you know, see what we come up with. So to your point, one of the things that we have done over the last like six to 12 months is implement processes and systems because we Ooh. were, I know, <laughs> we were customizing so many things. Like we were customizing pricing, we were customizing agreements, we were customizing you know, workflows, like uh, everything. And so now I would say today, and I'm sure we could improve, but today we have created workflows that are so automated and we have like a sheet with every link in it of this is how you do this. This is how you do this. This is, and it's, it works fabulous, especially for me, because I'm like, where is that thing? <laughs> so now I just know where that thing is, because it's one document with all the links. So I will tell you that Monday.com is our mothership, and we could not survive without it. So I have two team members that are both women that we all three work together on all of our clients. And that's how we communicate with our clients and that's how we communicate with each other. That's how we build out our sprints. That's how we build out our processes. And then what also works for our clients is we're able to show them where we are in whatever we're working on. So they see real time. Okay. We're, this is in progress. This is ready for you to review. This is complete. 
and it's completely transparent. So they see everything. And then if they have questions, we're like, use the Monday board and just mention us and ask us what you need. And we're going to give it to you. So that has that we couldn't function without Monday.com. <laughs> I will tell you that. Monday.com is great. And for all my listeners out there who know me, so Monday.com for Lisa is the equivalent to what the Digital Unicorns is using Slack and Airtable for. So we have our PM built out in Airtable and it's connected to Slack. And Slack is just my lifeline. So instead of instead of having a board like you do in Monday.com, they um they they slack we have a channel for every client and then they slack us their messages or their you know their concerns but and, but all of their real time progress and what we're working on is all in the kanban board right inside airtable which is awesome so it's uh, very so, similar yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so um tell me about i would love to hear more about the your, your sop process so like that, that i'm such a nerd i love sops i love the different processes we use loom so we use Loom and now I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about Loom AI right now because now what it does is you create the Loom video, you know, a step by step of, of whoever creates it. It's a step by step of them doing the thing. And then Loom AI now spits out the SOP document. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yes, huh? And I was like, exactly. Your face is like, exactly. I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And I mean, I spent probably four hours geeking out with this because I was like, I want to build a new process. And uh, (laughs) Kristen, my right-hand person, she's like, what are you doing? Where have you been all day? And I was like playing with Loom AI. And she goes, will you stop it? We don't need any more processes. We already have, you know. And it was so funny. Like, that's how excited I got. And we use it for, I'd be curious to know, do you also use or do you create, um, I I guess probably not, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. So because we're building these types of systems for our customers. We also build SOPs for our customers so that our training process for them, right? So they know how to use their software. Do you do anything like that um, from the marketing and branding standpoint? Do you have like, I mean, I'm not really sure. I guess if you're doing social media, but you're doing it for them, right? Like you're not teaching them how to do it. Correct. So we are implementing and executing. We're creating the strategy as as well as implementing and executing. So we don't create an SOP for them or, you know, walk them through how to do anything. But for our own, you know, internal process, we we do use Loom occasionally, but I think we also have a weekly sync up call. But I will tell you what we do on that weekly sync up call. We have a document attached to the Monday board for our weekly sync up call. And that document will have needs information and then discussion or FYI so that we don't waste any time going over the needs inf- or for your information or we don't waste any time f- of anything that's posted of, hey, I saw this link to this article or um, by the way, this client you know, went ahead and moved forward with this. It's just like an FYI. And then everything we need to discuss is listed under the discussion. So that is one process that works really well for us because we don't waste time on anything above the discussion line. Right. Like talking about stuff that you don't necessarily talk about. You only are moving the fires out of the way, right? Right. And so then, you know, here's, I could tell you like our workflow from somebody scheduling a call with me going through the whole process. So we have links that we have scheduled. We use Engage Bay. It's not a really um, well-known system out in the world, but it works for us. And that is what we use for our marketing automation. So our emails, campaigns, all of that runs through Engage Bay. Is the website also built in there? So website, um, no. email, okay. No, no, the website's built on WordPress, but we do have, you know, it linked through Engage Bay for like scheduling yeah. a call and stuff. So, you know, we have my calendar built into Engage Bay of my availability. We have the link they send out, they schedule what's called a toke sesh. And, um, and so then we, <laughs> and so 
we get on a call and then we have a list of questions that we want to ask them on that call. So again, automated. It's already there. All I need to do is duplicate the document, change the name to whoever the client is, and then I'm asking them questions and then that goes back into the Monday board. And then we have a pitch deck. The pitch deck is our sales deck, our our pricing, it's everything. So um, when I send them the pitch deck, we already have an email that's generated. So it goes with the pitch deck. So that are, already goes out. That lives in your Engage? That Engage platform? Nice. No, that actually lives in Monday. And I manually do that because sometimes I might want to add a little personal information. Mm-hmm. So rather than making it so standardized, because it is standardized, like it does say, thanks for your time today, blah, 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 blah. But I also want to say it was great to to talk about X or Y or I love that you brought up, you know, so, so I want to personalize it a little bit. So that comes from me directly. And then after all of that, we create the Monday boards, we build out their whole entire, you know, their resources. We ask them, this is what we need from you. We send them a document with a checklist and we create a Google Drive for them and we ask them to dump everything, but it all is has folders. And then we have a, a kickoff call, our internal kickoff call. Well, I'm sorry, let me back up. We also have a contract or an agreement that we send out. Again, it's completely standardized with an email already generated that I just attached the contract to. Nice. So there's just a lot of things that we have done over the last six to 12 months to automate things to your point. Yeah. And, and set it up. I love Monday.com. So like, I'm super excited to hear that you're using it. It's, it's funny because it's it's definitely one of the alternatives to, uh, we use Go High Level. Um, and I'm absolutely in love with Go High Level because everything's all in one place. And I used to be that person that didn't think you should use an all-in-one system because it doesn't do everything 100% perfect. But it does it all 90% of the way. It's like marginally there, 85 to 90% of the way, each of the things that it does. So it's it's uh, it's pretty fantastic. But so would you say, I would love to hear about, so you have your WordPress site, right? You said the website is built in WordPress. I'm yes. curious to know, I totally get manually adding in text for the emails, right? Because that's that combination of, AI automation and human interaction that I always talk about, right? You don't want to do 100, 100% automation, 100% AI, right? Like you don't want to do that. It dehumanizes your brand for sure. But I'm curious to know how um, how you're passing data. So is the only data that's going back and forth between like the website and the other engaged platform is just the calendaring? Nothing else is like your email or uh, your newsletter. Is that also connected into Engage or do you have a, you have a newsletter? I signed we up for it. <laughs> I'm like, wait, I signed called, up for that. It's called the Toke Times. Yes, yes. I know. I love it. I, yeah. Everything is so great. Um, yeah. So, so the, the newsletter is, um, so if you sign up, obviously you sign up on our website, but then it goes through Engage Bay to deliver. So, so we schedule. So, so one of the things that I do um, is I create all the newsletters for the, the following month. So right now it's early June. I'm working on July's newsletters. And okay. then one of my teammates edits them. We make sure that it sounds, you know, on brand and that, you know, sh- you know, I don't repeat myself and just getting another se- a second set of eyes on there. And then she goes and schedules them all in Engage Bay. So we send two atomic newsletters, atomic meaning short, very brief to the point. And we, we send them twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 420. <laughs> of course, because when else would you send them? Right. right. So then are you using, so you're using money.com as your CRM, customer relationship management, right? We are essentially because, because we're a small team and we're very boutique ish. We don't need this big CRM with, you know, hundreds of, um, different people in there and you know like we don't need a sales force we don't need you no know. One sales force no one I mean, I mean we're we're, <laughs> we're very boutique-ish we're very small so we could use monday.com as our crm and we we have a process built out with like initial conversation that's what i was going to ask so you have yeah. your pipeline built out for your yeah. process. yeah and then 
scent deck and then we have the date and then we have um, client reviewing and, you know, second phone, second call, you know, like we have the whole process built out and we just plug in the dates. Yeah. So that's the process that I was curious to get to. So you have the process. Is that process being manually moved through the, the, the pipeline or is engage like when someone responds to your email or when someone does that kind of behavioral or like, I call it behavioral or transactional. Like mm -hmm. you send them something that you're expecting a response for and they, and they, you know, and they engage and respond. Is that information then triggering your, your, your flow? So you don't have to move those people manually. I, I wish I could say that we're that automated, but we're not. So no, that process is me manually going in and updating. And one of the reasons, Megan, is I am the face of my brand. I am my brand. And so when when people get on a phone, when a potential client gets on a phone call, they're talking to me and they're trusting me to give them information, to build that relationship. I bring my team on when I feel it's appropriate. So I want that personalization. Yes, I love automation as much as many things as I could automate, the better. But there are things that I want to stay very personalized with. And so when they're responding and I'm responding and we're going back and forth to set up a second call or to ask questions about the deck or whatever, that's me manually moving it down the line. Right. And I think that sometimes, like depending on, like you said, um, and, and I'll let you get into that, um, depending on how many customers and how many people you're pushing through, right? It's, it's, it's the personalization that your brand needs, right? It's, it's a very, it goes back to what we were talking about at the top of the hour. You need to do you. And if mm -hmm. it makes you comfortable doing that, and sometimes if you're having one-on-one -on -one personal conversations you can't automate that. So that's actually the point. You you led me right down the perfect path <laughs> because there is such a thing as over automation. Mm -hmm. So I was hoping you were going to say that because <laughs> your brand and the way that you're managing that is the perfect, the perfect storm, if you will, because you're using automation where it works for you and it fits into your brand and your lifestyle and your business. And then you're personalizing and not over automating because you could, right? Like I could sit here and try to sales pitch you all day long and probably get you, convince you that you need to do that. But you know what's going to happen? Six months to eight months from now, you're going to be like, well, now I feel like we've over automated and I don't feel as personal. Right. right. And so right. there's that fine line of knowing when when to have those conversations with people and when not. And you do the same thing, I'm sure, with your clients. Like, right. there's things to talk about. There's things not to talk about. There's things to automate. There's things not to automate. So I'm really, really glad that you went there because people need to understand that. And I'm here, I'm screaming it from the, the rooftops because I'm an automation person, right? But you have to do what works for you. And if it doesn't work for your brand, and if you're a people person and your brand is all about engaging with people, then don't automate those things. I have brands, I have people that I work with that don't like people. And if anybody's paid attention to who I've been working with lately, you all know who I'm talking about. And he, he doesn't like people. He doesn't want to interact with that many people on a regular basis. It's just not his thing. So what do we do? We automate all of that stuff. And he still talks personally through chat and email and back and forth. He's just not... It's just, he just doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to have a lot of phone conversations. He doesn't want to have all that interaction. It's just not his, his way or his lifestyle. And that's fine because that works for him. Right. So why don't you jump in and tell us again, the agency, where people can find you, how they can find you on LinkedIn. What's the best way to contact you? So Lisa Williams on LinkedIn. Um, I post pretty much Monday through Friday and hang out there most of the time during the week. Um, I love LinkedIn. I, I, it's helped me build so many relationships, you know, inside the cannabis industry and outside the cannabis industry. Uh, the Toke Agency, we are on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter X. And um, it's the Toke Agency. And we post a lot of really fun 
on brand content through the Toke agency. And it's, it's a lot of play on words. It's a lot of, you know, let's toke and let's be buds and all of those things. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Toke agency.com. And it's yes. like, you guys, you have T O K E agency.com. You have to go check it out. It is, it's just the funniest thing. She's done such a great job with, like I said, the puns and the brand language and making it fun, light and airy. And it's awesome. Even if, even if you're not some, if even if you're on the uh, opposite side of where we are on, as far as the cannabis. whole cannabis thing, you just need to go check out the brand because it's funny and it's awesome. And it's- I, I will say one more thing, Megan. We couldn't do what we do for our customers if we didn't do it for ourselves. So we are an example of how we work with other brands. This is this is start to finish. The Toke Agency it was built from start to finish with our team. And so we have, we have to do that for ourselves so that we can do it for our clients. So yeah, the talk agency. I appreciate you so much. I'm so glad that you jumped on to chat with us. Thank you. And that is a wrap everybody. Thank you for tuning in and we will see you next week. And don't forget that technology is only good when it works.